This is the Christmas Movie Screenwriter Podcast, episode number five. Hello and welcome to the Christmas Movie Screenwriter Podcast. I'm your host, Karen McCann. The Christmas Movie Screenwriter is a podcast about writing, producing, and selling Christmas movies. I publish a transcript with every episode if you want to read something later. Just go to the website at www.christmasmoviescreenwriter.com. A quick few words about what I'm working on. I was just at the AFM, the American Film Market, the last few days. One thing I learned was that I need to attend more seminars. I stood in line with two other filmmakers and we chatted for about half an hour while in line. It was great. There was no pressure to pitch and I felt we all learned something from each other. Many times I focus on meeting exhibitors and not networking with other filmmakers. So lesson learned. On the script front, I had a fantastic reception for my projects. So writers, it's worth knocking on doors even if you don't have a scheduled meeting. Writers tend to be introverts, so it's a bit of a challenge to cold call producers. But it worked for me, and I hope to have good news soon. Our guest today is screenwriter-producer Samantha Herman. She has 10 produced Hallmark movies under her belt. Now, just a note, this interview was recorded before the end of the writer's strike. Here is the interview. Today's guest is Samantha Herman. Making people laugh was always Samantha's primary pursuit. With that ultimate goal in mind, she also decided to academically foster her passion, studying English and film at the University of Toronto in her hometown. Traveling towards Hollywood, she paused in Chicago, where she graduated cum laude from Loyola University Chicago Law School. Finally, she moved to L.A. in 2010 with her California bar license in hand. Since then, Samantha has produced a number of short films, music videos, television pilots, and three features. As a screenwriter, Samantha has found success in the romantic comedy genre with 10 produced Hallmark Channel films under her belt and many more in development for Hallmark and various streamers. Due to a bet, she also wrote a romance novel and self-published it on Amazon. Well, Samantha, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Now, can you take a minute and tell us about yourself and your work? Um, Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm from Toronto, but I knew I wanted to come for the bright lights of Hollywood. So I made my way down here in 2010, um, initially as a lawyer. um, And then once I got my foothold in the screenwriting portion of my career, which I'm sure we'll get to in further detail, um, that's been more of the primary expenditure of my time. And now, of course, as probably all your listeners know, we're on strike. So it slows down for the moment. Uh, so you can't, well, can you write a spec script? Yes, we can. And I am. Okay. I was, I would say you might as well use this time. Yeah. So you talked, you know, a little bit, I talked about your journey out to LA, but what was the journey breaking into the industry as a Christmas movie screenwriter? So I watched these movies my whole life. I love them. I'm Jewish. So this was how I celebrated Christmas. So it was no accident that I, Fall, uh, fell into this and pursued it. Um, but I wrote my first movie on spec. Um, it became Mingle All the Way. But at the time when I had it in hand, I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I'd had a couple bites from producers that seemed to say maybe it sounded like a good idea, but I, I really didn't know what to do with that. Um, and I was so naive that I thought that their kind interest meant that they wanted it, um, which oh, was yeah. not necessarily the case. So anyway, I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, I didn't have representation at the time. And so um, my path was a bit circuitous. And I think um, speaks to how kind of the Wild West nature of how things are here right. now. It's not just right. a typical route um, that traditionally has been the path. But anyhow, long story short, I met Jen Lilly, my future leading lady at a party at Sundance. Um, she had just done her first Hallmark movie, and I knew that because I'd seen the advert for it. Um, and she was there with a friend who knew the friend that I was there with. And so we were just chatting, small talk at the same party with no agenda. And I just brought up that I had written this movie just as something to talk about. Um, I didn't think, you know, business wise, anything would come of it. But luckily for me, she took an interest. Um, she read it, uh, asked if she could send it to the producer with whom she had done her movie out of Vancouver. Oh, wow. Um, and so that producer then submitted it to the network. 
on all of our behalves, wow. the producer to produce, Jen to star, and me as the writer, with the caveat, and I think maybe this is interesting for your listeners that want to pursue this, that possibly it would be acquired and then appointed to someone else to to rewrite it. And oh. was I okay with that? And I was, I'm like, anything to get in, maybe I'll get to do the next one. Whatever this looks like, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And for whatever reason, um, they didn't replace me with someone else. They let me do it. Um, but essentially, um, maybe this is too granular, but uh, it served basically as if it was a one page pitch. Um, it's okay. a promise in me and, and the premise, um, but we retooled it from the ground up under their purview and under their parameters. And I, I didn't know how to put in commercial breaks at the time. So I learned all the formatting um, kind of live from the ground. That was mingle all the way. That was mingle all the way. Yeah, it was. It was completely written when you met Jen. It was completely written. Or a version of it was completely written. Right, right. The version right. that you may have seen um, was very much redone. Did she? Did when you went to that party? Did you think, oh, there's a Christmas Hallmark actress? I should go talk to her. No, I thought I've seen her on soap operas, and I know she's got a Hallmark movie, and I want to talk to her as a fan and maybe have a friendly chat. I had no uh. agenda. Oh, okay. Wow. That was, that was fortuitous. Good, good, good. Yes. I've told her many times that she has changed my life for the better. I'm very uh, grateful. So do you, are you partnering like you always want her in, in your movies? I would love to work with her again. We've only done uh, one more in addition to Ming all the way together. Wow. And we've pitched a couple of things um, and haven't gone forward, but I would love to work with her again. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So what specific elements do you think are essential to include in a successful Christmas movie screenplay? As this may or may not surprise you, Christmas. Um, <laughs> Christmas has to be present in, you know, all the scenes, all the decor, and just a kind of an explosion of festivity. Um, so that's important. I've gotten those notes. I'm like, where's the where's the decoration? Oh. And And try to think of, you know, interesting ways that the characters can celebrate that are maybe not just the typical ones. I end up going back to my well of, you know, the gingerbread contest, but huh. try to mix it up a little bit. And then of course, you know, family, love, happy endings. Um, and then I, I know we're going to get into this more, but um, ideally something a little bit more unique as far as the location and the reason why the characters have to be in proximity and not just the, you know, small town girl goes home. Exactly. So, you know, we all kind of know the, the Christmas formula. So how do you balance meeting the audience expectations? Because this is sort of like comfort food. They they know what they want and the buyers know what they want. Uh, you know, you want to stay fresh, but not predictable or cliche. Yeah, it's a big challenge. And um, I have fallen into the trap of, you know, kind of fulfilling the tropes that I've seen and think are expected. Um, and as I just said, you know, it used to be a small town girl or a small town boy has moved to the big city. They go back uh, and, you know, reconnect with their high school boyfriend and abandon their careers and Whoa. resettle <laughs> back there, which and then suddenly get engaged or whatever. <laughs> um, so try not to do all of that. And fortunately, um, especially in the Hallmark space, they've been um, very interested and welcoming of, you know, more grounded and real world dynamics. So it's not just the snow globe idyllic version of of our leading lady and our leading man they still have to be likable and rootable um but i think there's more allowance for more flawed characters more quirky characters more okay. unique characters and and you know just the job titles you know there's a there's always the ones that you know we're not doing that this year we have too many so you just kind of stay on top of what what has been done most recently and just keep them in a different circumstance. And I also try to draw on people that I know my own experiences and, and dramatize those real life things that are maybe a little more substantive. Right. Now, if you're writing a script on spec uh, and you've finished it, it's, you've had people read it, it's ready to go out. What's the next step? How do you move it into, how, how do you help move it into production? So, that's a good question. Um, for the most part, the Christmas ones that I do are commissioned. And so I know who they belong to and that they're hopefully going to go forward within, you know, the hands of the people that asked for it. But I do write on my own from time to time. And now I am um, during our strike period. I think, um, first of all, get other people to read it before you might think it's ready. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I've fallen into that myself, but uh, it really needs some fresh eyes. 
Um, and hopefully you can find people that are in the industry or appreciate the industry so they know what a script should look like and, and get that feedback and go through a few re- revisions before it actually is, you know, fully baked. Um, and then at that point, I think attachments are really key right now. So uh, a director or a producer or a talent that you can have belong to the project to then shepherd it forward and say, hey, they want to do it. I think that's an asset, but you don't want to do too much of that. There's a fine line because you don't want to be too encumbered. So, you know, maybe right, right. The, the buyer won't want that person. Um, but I think when you're first starting, I mean, that's what I did with Jen and it was instrumental. Um, and I think maybe you have other questions towards this, but, you know, networking is right. It, it's everything in this career. It's all relationship based. Is when you're getting these producers or actors or directors, is that just with a letter of intent or it's actual contract? As far as their attachment? Uh, yeah, it yeah. can be casual. Yeah. Okay. Letter so, of intent. Right. So I would think that wouldn't scare away a buyer because letter of intent. I mean, of course, the relationship would be hurt, I think, if, they, if yes. the, a big actress said, yes, I want to do your movie. And the, and the buyer's like, uh, no. And you have to go back to your friend and say, guess what? You want this bit part? Yes, yeah. that's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. So a uh, side question, when, just so our audience knows, uh, you know, they could look forward to someday being in your shoes. When you are commissioned uh, to write a script, can you tell us like the timeline? Like when do you, uh, how, do they want a treatment? How long do you get? How long does it take? Did you get to write the script? Is it, what's the process? Yeah. So just Hallmark specifically, and I've done stuff for CBS and I'll just speak to Hallmark because that's most of my experience. There are three avenues that I have found um, work with them. Number one is you pitch your own idea um, verbally or maybe a a paragraph or a blurb and they like it. And then you have a larger conversation. That's one road. One is the project is already greenlit with a producer and they need someone to execute on it. And you might be called in to basically audition to see if you're the right person for the part. And you would say, this is my take on what the blurb that you've provided is. um, And you might be chosen. Um, And then the third way is to come on as a rewriter for something that's already uh, ongoing. Um, And same thing, you would say, here's what I think might need to be reworked. Here's what I would do with it. Um, So I'm calling it auditioning, but it's really pitching on the project. Um, And so basically in all cases, once you get through that, first wave of the right. gauntlet, they, for the most part, do want an outline. Um, and it can be bullets, paragraphs, that doesn't seem to be, you know, preferential in either way, but they want to see what are the highlight milestone moments? What are the act breaks? Um, you know, as far as, you know, the cliffhangers going out of the, you know, into commercial, um, what are the character arcs? How do the, the leads impact each other to result in that arc concluding? in a happy way. And there's a lot of backstory that they like to hear. Um, so that all goes into the outline and you might go through that a couple of times before you're released into the wild. And that's what I'm calling my bunker to write the first draft. Um, and it, timeline, it, there can be a lot of stop and wait and then go. Um, usually the outline a couple of weeks and then you might hear right away, adjust this or go forward. Um, and it depends on, you know, when they feel like they need to film it. So I've had some where it's like, just go, we need it, you know, ASAP. And then some I've waited months in between phases. So it really is every which way. Um, and then, then you, sorry, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, if they say, okay, we like the treatment, we like the outline, write the script. How much time do you normally get to write from page one to 90 or whatever? I 105 is their sweet spot. If, uh, if your listeners really want to hear, uh, but it's good to know. Yeah, uh, I'm on the faster side. I think I'm known for that. And I, if I know that you know this is an urgent matter, um, two weeks. And uh, you know, if I have a more leisurely window, up to six. Two weeks. You do write fast. That is yes. fast. It's funny because you know when I look at some of these uh, on Netflix or whatever. Uh, when I look at the, uh, especially uh, it just it could be Hallmark, could be anybody, these movies, it's like 84 minutes, 85 minutes. Yeah. But but yours, you're saying start with 105 pages. 
Yeah. And that was one of the things I didn't know going into it. So the first draft of my mingle all the way script was exactly that. I think it was maybe 88, something like that. Cause I thought, you know, one page, one minute, but they like it longer. They feel more than they use. Um, and so that is lost in the edit. And, uh, hmm. you know, then you have to figure out what the connective tissue is to make sure that it all makes sense, oh, but okay. they do, they do like to have more footage than more cushion. More cushion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cushion. I get it. Okay, so how would you suggest uh, screenwriters expand their network of producers? And would you suggest conferences, if so, like Sundance, you know, which ones or competitions or utilizing online platforms? I, I've i never really taken the competition route myself. There are some re- big name ones like Nickel and Blacklist and a couple, you know, Academy ones that really get you noticed. Um, and then the other ones, it's kind of a crapshoot of, you know, is it just a money grab for the entry fee or do people really source from it? So I would suggest that if your audience listeners see one, just to vet it a little bit, see if anything has actually come out of it. Maybe try and ask around if someone has participated in it and see what their experience is. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing the competition route. I think there's value in getting your name out there, getting reads. Um, conferences. I would equate that with film festivals. And yeah, for sure. It's an amazing outlet to see films, meet people, there's parties, um, people are interested in talking about film. So it's, and it's a conversational way to do it. Um, It doesn't feel as formal. So I think those are great places to go and meet people. Um, And online wise, I think IMDb Pro is something that everyone Mm -hmm. who's trying to do this should have. It's the, it's the paid version of IMDb and you can find contact information for just about anybody. Um, And uh, when I do my uh, mentor group, I say, don't ask, don't get. Um, and that is my mantra uh, in a oh, nice, yeah. polite, I, I like that. you know, succinct way. Um, and there's, I've had people reach out to me cold and ask for a conversation and I'll talk to anybody um, if I have, you know, if I'm able right. to. Right. Um, and I, I have done that as the, as the requester as well. And I've had those conversations. Right. So I think if you go into that with no firm agenda, but just wanting to meet someone, wanting to hear their experience and, right, right. and you know, come in with something specific. I've gotten the ones that are like clearly BCC'd to like a hundred people. <laughs> My recommendation is give the two minutes of extra effort to, you know, right. put in something where it looks like, you know, who you're sending it to. Besides, and, uh, uh, go ahead. Besides. What? Oh, and just, just you never know what's going to come from that. And you never know like what assistant today is the executive of tomorrow. So these relationships all matter and they all add up, even if that opportunity isn't the following week. Right. You just never know, you know, it's a long, it's a long game in this biz and it's, you know, talent is good. Hard work is good, but relationships are 90%. Oh, that's yeah. That's great. That's great. So you mentioned, um, Film markets, film festivals, besides Sundance, are there others that you recommend? I mean, I'm biased because I'm from Toronto, but I always go, except for this year, back for TIFF. Um, There's, uh, you know, LA Film Festival. I I don't know, you know, Austin Film Festival um, is a good one. I've never been to it, but I would love to. Uh, South by. AFM? Kind of all the AFM. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, good, good. Now, uh, during, you know, we're all, we're in the middle of a strike still, and one of the big arguments is AI. So yes. my question about AI is, do you think AI will change the way Christmas movies are written or made? And if so, how? I think it's possible, and I'm frightened by that. And, and you know, not just the Christmas of it all, but the storytelling as a whole. I mean, it's one of the oldest things that we have done as human beings, and right. to have a robot, I mean, I don't know the terminology, I'm not yeah, techie, yeah. <laughs> take over for that, I think is just a shame and a blight on, right. on what era we're in right now. Um, so I'm hoping it's not going to take over to the extent that, you know, Skynet becomes real. <laughs> um, but I think it's possible that, um, you know, algorithmically, there might be pitches. Um, there, wow. I think it's possible that a first draft could be written, but it would have no soul. It would have no right, life experience. Right, it would have right, right. no nuance. Um, and it, it, they can't reflect an authentic human 
person or experience. And so I'm hoping that it won't, but I fear that it will, especially at the, you know, like I was mentioning the the blurbs. Right. Right. At, at that phase, I think it could have an impact, but I hope, I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. You and me both. So what now you, you, you got a ton of work. So what, what is your favorite script? I know it's hard to pick one. What's your favorite script that you've written and why? Um, I think I'd have to pick between two mingle because it was the first one I learned so much and I had such passion for it. And it was a nerve wracking experience. I was, I really didn't want to mess it up. I knew that if I did a good job or a good enough job, they would have me back. Um, so it was an amazing learning experience and it was just, you know, the most fun because I was just jumping into this new pool. Um, and then to have it with Jen and I got to go and I think it turned out well, Uh, that one, I, you know, it's precious to me. Um, and then I have a new one on the go, uh, called Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Um, and that one was a bit of fun for me because it's multiversal, like sliding doorsy a little bit. So I got to stretch some genre. Um, and so that one is, um, with producers and hopefully we'll find a home, maybe has found a home during this time. Um, and, uh, Hope that we'll see the light of day in the next year or so. Uh, that's a great idea. I, 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 I like it's very, very unique. There you go. You've already sold me. And just, just, just two words, sliding, three words, Christmas sliding doors. That, that yes. Could be, <laughs> that could be your title. <laughs> uh, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Okay. Um, okay. Now, getting a movie made, uh, as you just mentioned, can be very stressful. Uh, so, what do you do to, you know, maintain a work life balance? And what kind do you have any hobbies? I do, but my, my passion is TV and film and books. And so I have like a limited scope of what I like. So I'm at the movie theater multiple times a week. I watch every show. Um, I think that's important too. I've met so many people who are trying to do this because they perceive it as glamorous, but don't actually digest the content that is out there. I'm like, no, but you should like this because right. You should do it because you like it. And I I have a genuine passion for it. And then, you know, outside of that, I knit and I do puzzles. Um, Oh, neat. uh, Those are my hometown or at-home hobbies. And uh, I play league trivia. That's where I, uh, that's my athleticism. Uh, Not. (laughs) (laughs) You'd be good at trivia night. So what advice would you give to your younger self? My younger self knew that she wanted to do this, but was very shy, uh, would not admit it, would never show anyone her work. And so this business is not made for the timid. And I've, right, right. You know, I've kind of graduated into a more boisterous and more overt and assertive version of that. But if I had done it sooner, maybe it would have gotten the ball rolling sooner. So that's what I would say. And also just read more scripts. Um, cause I watch everything, but it's different on the page. So I would have started that sooner as well. Uh, I kind of have an unusual question that I just kind of popped into my mind. Uh, has your law background, has that given you any kind of edge or do you feel like I'm more prepared when I talk to producers? Has that helped you? It did help, especially at the beginning when I didn't have reps, I was doing my own agreement. So it just helped me understand the language and what I was promising and, and make sure that those obligations were fulfilled on both ends. So uh, good, that good. definitely helps. And we you know, flex that they, you know, may not take advantage as much uh, <laughs> without that. Uh, so that has helped. I did one movie that had a legal component to it. And of course it was done in the most preposterous way. So mm, yeah. I know that helps. So much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you are uh, you doing any are you are you working as a lawyer representing anyone or is it is it just I have this great background in education? Um, I'm still I still do a little bit of business affairs consulting, mostly for indie filmmakers um, and writers. So yeah, I'm still active in that. Less so as I was at the beginning um, before the writing took off, but I still have some repeat customers, yeah, and clients. That's good. Well, you'd be great in a meet in a meeting with the producers. You. You'd be like, oh, talk to her. She's the lawyer." <laughs> Thank you. So, to uh, wrap up, would you like to share any social media details or website links so our audience knows how to keep track of your work? Um, sure. So, uh, I'm on the gram. That's where I can be uh, most widely found, and um, my handle 
you know, clearly I'm an old millennial. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, is Shermy S underscore Hermy H E R M Y. Great. A lot of strike content right now. Oh, great, great. And uh, any other like X or do what, X or Twitter or anything like that? Uh, I do. I have Twitter, and I think it's the same name. But I, I'm a more of a lurker on Twitter. Right. I don't okay. post very often, <laughs> but okay. I'm there. Okay, great. Well, Samantha, this has been great. This has been very educational, and thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye bye. And now for my key points. Today, I have four. Number one, meeting people. Samantha mentioned how she met an actress at a Sundance Film Festival party. She knew the actress had done her first Hallmark movie and went over to chat about it. Samantha happened to mention she had just written her first Christmas script. Long story short, the actress read it, liked it, and gave it to her producer, and the film was made. Samantha didn't have an agenda or tried to pitch her project to the actress. She was just chatting. She was genuine and didn't steamroll folks with a pitch, which is a real turnoff. Be genuine and be interested in other people. Hollywood is based on relationships and good things come from that. Number two, grounded characters. According to Samantha, Hallmark is more open these days to more flawed and quirky characters. And having an interesting job is a plus, not the same old cliched, ad exec, or baker. Number three, commissioned script. There are three ways. One is you pitch your own idea. Two is you audition for a project that's already greenlit, and that means you give your take on the story. And number three, you're hired to rewrite a completed script. Number four, outlines. If you get past any of these steps and are commissioned to do a script, you'll be asked to provide an outline. This can be in bullet form or in paragraph form. Here's the gist of what needs to be covered. A, highlights or milestone moments. B, act breaks. C, character arcs. How do the leads impact each other to result in the arc, concluding in a happy way? Well, that's the show. Thank you for listening. To show your support, please give us a five-star rating on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts. And sign up to be notified of the launch of our membership website, at www.christmasmoviescreenwriter.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next Christmas Movie Screenwriter Podcast. Bye.